How you going everyone, Nick here and a little bit of a different one today uh, because over the last couple of months I've seen some comments where people have been asking what settings I use within things like OBS uh, and editing software to record uh, and, and upload my videos to YouTube. Um, so I just wanted to go through the settings that I use for OBS in terms of the video settings, audio settings, bit rates and things like that, uh, as well as what I use um, to create my videos in Adobe Premiere Pro, which is my editing software that I use to create videos. So this isn't necessarily, you know, uh, you must follow these. It's not necessarily a guide or anything like that. I'm no expert when it comes to this sort of stuff, but I have tinkered around and found what works for me. So hopefully this might help you out a little bit or at least gain some understanding as to how I create my videos. And uh, look, if there's something that you can teach me to make these look even better, or change some settings that I use, uh, you know, let me know in the comments. I'm more than happy to try things out and you know, see what we can do to make these videos look even, even better than they do. So let's get stuck into it and uh, we'll start with OBS. Okay, so looking at recording tab, which is typically, you know, obviously what I use for recording my videos. Um, my settings are set up pretty pretty basically, but recording format, MPEG-4, and I use two audio tracks. One for the desktop audio or game audio, and the other for my microphone. So I have those two channels. That way, when I'm editing the video, I can adjust them dynamically. Um, now I have an NVIDIA uh, RTX 3080 Ti, so I can use the NVIDIA NVENC H264U encoder. There are other options here, of course. SVT AV1, I actually don't know what these are. Um, AOM AV1 and X264. So X264 will use uh, your CPU to do encoding, which can be quite taxing on your CPU, depending on what which one you have. Uh, but using the NVIDIA NVENC encoder obviously then moves all of the uh, encoding load to the GPU. So if you have a good GPU, high-end GPU, definitely utilize that um, if you've got the room to spare. If you have a video card that's older than the 2000 series RTX, so let's say you've got a 1080 or something like that, um, they don't get any benefit from the new NVIDIA NVENC encoder, as far as I'm aware. Uh, and I think you'll probably see um, an encoder appear here without new in brackets on the end, or you can just use the new one and it won't get any benefits. So I use that um, AMD Video card users, of course, also have other options available. There is um, a, an AMD specific encoder as well, which is very similar to NVENC, but you know, from what I hear, uh, the NVENC new encoder is actually quite good and quite widely used. Now I record uh, at native 1440p, so 2560 by 1440, and I do not rescale that output. So uh, I keep it at a raw 1440p. You can, if you want to rescale the output down to say 1080p or something like that, um, obviously, obviously that will affect your um, end file sizes and, and things. But uh, if you're like me and you want, you know, some high quality footage, uh, then I keep that at 1440p and don't rescale. Uh, I don't have any custom muxer settings or muxer. I don't know how you want to say that. Uh, and then down into the real interesting part is the uh, actual encoder settings. So I use CQP as the rate control method. You can have like constant bitrate, variable bitrate, lossless. Uh, I use CQP, in my experience, it's yielded the best results uh, for me, especially in sim racing videos, which are you know, typically fast motion and a lot happening on the screen at once. Uh, and I set that at the CQ level at 18, which means you know, essentially um, the lower this number, the higher the quality. And it is, you know, there is a diminishing return on this. So I wouldn't necessarily go any lower than 18, you know, at least for 1440p video. Um, you know, a lot of people who are recording 1080p would put this at something like 22 because um, it doesn't require as much uh, you know, visual quality at that point. But um, you know, this does yield quite large file sizes as well. So some of my videos you know, that might be in the 20 minute range could be upwards of you know, 20 gigs uh, in output file size. So just keep that in mind. Um, but I just want to work with you know, as high quality you know, raw files as I can. And then I can uh, you know, transcode that into you know, um, another format uh, with high compression once I do uh, my editing. And then looking down a bit further, keyframe interval, I just leave it at zero because it's the automatic setting. Preset is quality. You can go up to max quality if you want, but of course that's going to impact the, uh, the load uh, on your GPU. I use the high profile. Now these two 
checkboxes here, which are part of the NVENC new encoder, uh, are actually something of a bit of a debate. Um, now, typically, look ahead, you know, the, the uh, instructions say that if it's enabled, it will increase visual quality by only using however many B frames are necessary, up to the maximum at the cost of increased GPU utilization. Now, I think the general consensus here is if you're uh, mainly recording you know, low motion or static, almost uh, gameplay footage, etc. Um, you can use this and you probably want to move the max B frames up from two to four. Uh, I don't use this because as I, as I understand and in my testing, it can actually have a negative impact on a uh, fast, fast motion uh, video like sim racing seems to be. Um, now you can use psycho visual tuning as well. Now this feature uh, enables encoder settings that optimize the use of bitrate for increased perceived visual quality, especially in situations with high motion at the cost of increased GPU utilization. So this is hit and miss, you know, I don't necessarily use it. Um, it's not enabled at the moment. I haven't noticed any major um, you know, benefits from utilizing this. Your results may differ. Of course, this entire video is just around my setup and what I've experienced, but you, know, you can give this a go for yourself and see what you think. However, look, I mean, yes, there are moments in some sim racing videos that I've had where you know, there's a lot of trees going past or a lot of cars on the track and a lot of movement and you start to see some pixelation in the video quality, which can you know, obviously be a little bit jarring and uh, you know, reduces the quality of the overall video. So look, it's up to you. Give us a go, do some tests for yourself uh, and see what you think. Uh, GPU, I leave it zero and then max B frames is two because I'm not using look ahead. So that's it. Now, if you look at the video settings, this is very simple. As I said before, I keep this at 1440p. This is a 16 by, by nine aspect ratio. Uh, so the scale resolution or output resolution is 2560 by 1440. I use the Lanxos filter with 36 samples. Um, you can drop this down to like by linear area or by cubic. Uh, Lanxos is, yeah, I think, quite commonly understood as uh, the best option here and it isn't particularly taxing or anything like that. Uh, and then I output at 60 frames per second. So if you're doing high quality video, you know, like 1440p is, especially when you output to YouTube um, and things like sim racing, etc., you want it to be smooth. You don't want to be running at 30 FPS. It does look a little bit odd. Um, so 60 FPS is the way to go if, you're, if your system can handle it. So just looking quickly at my audio settings as well. Um, you know, this is something that some people ask the questions around, you know, how do you get good quality audio? Well, I mean, you know, if you're looking at a microphone, you need to start with a, a good high quality mic. Um, you know, I typically uh, would you know, spend a little bit of extra money having something that's high quality so that you're working with something, you know, that obviously outputs good quality audio from the get go. And then you can tweak it in software later. Um, I use uh, an Audio-Technica XLR broadcast mic connected with a uh, Focusrite Skylet Solo USB audio interface. So that's where all my audio is going through at the moment. And that is, you know, my desktop audio uh, device at the moment. Uh, going back a little bit though, I do use a sample rate of 48 kilohertz and obviously stereo sound. Now you may notice that I actually don't have a microphone enabled in this list. And the reason for that is, is because I've added the microphone, if you look down the bottom here, as its own um, source within, uh, within the scene that I use for, for YouTube video recording. The benefits of which is that uh, you can separate it out. You can uh, have a little bit more customization and a little bit more control as to how you uh, you utilize the microphone uh, in OBS. And I just prefer it that way. You know, if you need to do separate muting or anything like that, you're not touching, um, you know, built-in mic settings. Just a personal preference. You don't have to do it that way, but uh, that's how I do it. Um, now, meters and things, this is entirely personal preference. This is how you just want these meters down the bottom to look up to you. I just leave it at, you know, as they are out of the box. And then my monitor monitoring device, if you want to hear back sound is uh, just my regular speakers that go into my, uh, my headphones. Uh, I do record, if we can find it somewhere, it's actually in the output section, audio. I do actually record track one and track two, which are my two tracks that I use uh, at 320 uh, audio bitrate. You don't necessarily have to do this. You know, microphones don't necessarily benefit, for example, from, from bitrate that high. Um, but, you know, I'll just leave it like that. And look, when I do my encoding anyway later um, and, you know, my editing in uh, Adobe Premiere, you can, uh, you can adjust that on the fly as well. But I just find that's, you know, high quality. It works well for me. Now, 
how does this all translate into when I get into my editing phase? Uh, and what is the impact on file size and, and what settings do I use here for the output file that I upload to YouTube? So first and foremost, uh, I use Adobe Premiere Pro uh, 2021 at the moment because I have uh, neglected the updates on this. <laughs> I need to actually go through an update because I'm sure it's available in 2022 uh, now. But here's an example of you know my last video that I did, which was the AMS2 um, Formula Gen 2 2022 cars. Um, but this file, you know, it's um, you know, it's fairly large. I think the output file, as I mentioned before, um, it was upwards of 15 or 16 gigs that we started at. So um, you can see that here, uh, and that's the raw 1440p file. Now, if I was to export this. Um, I have a look at some of the settings that I utilize here. Um, we can have a look and see just what we can do to kind of reduce that file size. So first and foremost, I use the HEVC H265 format. Now this is a relatively new format um, and is quite you know, high compression, high quality, um, you know, really retains that almost raw quality that you get from the high quality video. So definitely using that. Um, I do have a preset here, but I usually go through and just you know set my settings anyway by myself. So video settings, you can see here that the file is 2560 by 1440 and is a 60 FPS frame rate. That's a bit hard to see. Typically render at maximum depth. And then we go down to the bitrate settings. Now what I normally do here, uh, you can see at the moment that the estimated file size is around 940 megs because we're at the moment aiming with a variable bitrate of one pass at seven megabits per second. So typically that's not quite high enough for 1440p video. Uh, you want it to be quite high. I usually just max this out. So the max it'll go is 25 uh, megabits per second at variable bitrate. And I just max out the quality. As you can see, that's now gone to a file size of about 3.2 gig, um, which, you know, versus 16 and a half gig or whatever it was for this file by itself uh, after recording then you know, I'm not necessarily complaining. If you have a good enough internet to upload that to YouTube, you know, it kind of balances out to the recommended uh, file size and bitrate, etc., for 1440p video. Any advanced settings, I don't, I don't mess around with any of these, uh, keyframe distance or um, VR video, etc. Even if I am recording VR, because I do have static elements on the screen as well, um, I'm not actually aiming to make a VR output file that is you know, viewed in VR headsets. So we leave that unticked. Uh, in these settings down the bottom, we just use maximum render quality. Uh, and then that's it. That's as far as we go in terms of video. Audio, I leave it with AAC audio at 48,000 hertz, which is what it's recorded at as well. In stereo with a bit rate of 320 kilobits per second. And that's pretty straightforward. I think nothing major there. Of course, you know, as I've mentioned many times throughout this video already, these settings, you know, are completely unique to, to me in terms of my preferred way of creating videos, um, you know, with my hardware and the software that I, that I have available to me. So your results uh, may, of course, differ. And depending on what you've got in your computer, in terms of specs, uh, you may have to you know, drop these down or, or do uh, other things to, to make it work for you. So keep that in mind at all times <laughs> on this one. This is not a, a tutorial video on exactly what to do, but just an idea as to how I get my videos done and you know looking relatively crisp I think for the most part okay well there you go so that's just a quick overview as to the settings that I use in OBS and Adobe Premiere Pro uh, to create my videos as I said you know I'm no expert uh, I, I try things out I test things out I see what works I see what doesn't I think we've got a generally good you know, position in terms of um, how my videos turn out, they generally look pretty good. I think it definitely helps to use things like you know, higher resolutions like 1440p at 60 frames per second. Um, certainly helps, especially with YouTube. Uh, and you know, YouTube's quite lenient on the sorts of you know, bit rates and things that you output. So uh, you can definitely get some really high quality uh, videos going there. But as I said before, uh, you know, let me know if there's anything that you, know, you could, you know, any advice that you could give me in terms of how I could improve my video quality or different settings to utilize, etc. Um, and you know, if you disagree with my settings or my thoughts on uh, how certain things work, then you know, I'm more than happy for you to let me know in the comments. You know, I'm not afraid to have a bit of feedback, of course. But um, look, you know, I thought we'd just touch on those settings components. If 
Um, if you'd like any more information about you know how I've done like my scene setup, how I've added my um, my camera, my microphone, etc., more than happy to go through and do another video. Um, but really, I think a lot of people and there's tons of videos out there for that sort of thing. So um, you know, I'd just be another fish in the sea, really, when it comes to that component. But of course, you know, any questions, let me know in the comments. I hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll be back with some actual sim racing soon. Thanks. See you later.